The story of this bowl began in August of 2017 when Hurricane Irma hit Florida. I had just gotten my lathe a few months later that year. And though the storm was just awful for so many people, especially in places like Puerto Rico, we were luckily spared the worst of it in central Florida. But that's my first time ever boarding up windows and fearing a storm. And I've been in Florida for about 20 years now. After it was all said and done, it was a bit like Christmas for wood turners. People were just throwing out huge chunk of, chunks of wood on the street that had been downed in the storm. So I'd roll around in my car and pick them up like a weirdo. And this was the wood I first tried on my one-way bowl pouring system. Yeah, not the best idea I ever had was to use that Forstner bit on the bowl before using the core. As you saw, it left me with a weirdly shaped donut instead of a small bowl. The wood was pretty dried out because I had rough turned it and let it sit for a long time. So it was a bit of a challenge for the tool. I didn't want to make my first attempt on a nicer wood in case I messed up. In my limited experience, I think the one way should only be used on green woods or soft woods not old dried out oak. In fact, I was using the high speed steel cutter at first and it just wasn't working. The tip got smoking hot and was barely nibbling at the wood. This was a brand new cutter straight from the factory. I tried sharpening to see if that would help, but I'm not sure if I just made the cutter worse. Then I found out they offer carbide cutter heads. And though they are really expensive for such a tiny piece of metal, they are worth it. While it's still slow going, you'll see the carbide does manage to cut the oak fairly well, and it wasn't getting ridiculously hot either. And this was just after the wood had further dried out too. So after that I end up giving up on the core for this bowl. I just wanted to get it finished. I hold up a piece of thin stock where the bottom of the bowl is glued to the waste block. I use that as a reference edge for my square to determine the depth of the bowl. I know the rough wall thickness that I'm shooting for, so I adjust the square down by that amount. I reverse the square direction to reference the tip of the force in a bit and just eyeball the spot where the square ends. As I'm drilling, I close one eye to reduce parallax, and when that spot on the bed is reached by the top rim of the bowl, I know when to stop drilling. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's definitely better to err on the side of caution and not drill too deep. I like to use carbide tools when I'm hollowing out things. Uh, it's easier to get the angle just right. Not to mention, this oak bowl is really tough. For the last bit of the bowl, I switched to my Jameson hollowing rig. I think it's because the tool at the very back of the bowl is pretty far away from my tool rest, and I don't have a curved tool rest. Uh, not to mention it's almost impossible to put a catch with the Jameson tool. Another nice thing about the Jameson tool is it comes with a laser sight, which will help you determine how far in the bowl you are and where the wall thickness is. Honestly, if I hadn't been using this tool when I was, I probably would have gotten hurt pretty badly, as you'll see next.
really care about it. If all this crap can happen, no reason. I don't even know what I think it's because it was dry and rotted and boom! Literally just exploded everywhere. No, amazingly not. Probably that would that would have hurt. That was terrifying. No, like probably bruised. I mean I had my face in this one. It sucked. That was crazy. I've never even seen it like that. Like, I wasn't even touching it. I heard like a little crack, and I think that was it. I was just like giving up the ghost. Holy cow. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic ball better than he was before. Better, stronger. Faster. My first thought here was to use a rough turned waste block in the center of the bowl to take up space, and then add resin to the rest. This method works okay as I demonstrated in my segmented fruit bowl video, but then I have to rehollow the bowl out, plus despite the waste block it still takes up a ton of expensive resin to do this. So I tried something different this time. I just did many smaller pours and relied on gravity for the resin to fill in the cracks. I have West Epoxy, Alumilite, and 5 mic Epoxy I got from Stuart McDonald. The Stuart McDonald's is definitely the best for this application, but I only had a small amount. It's really meant for tiny touch-ups on guitars. So I ended up trying all three. The Alumilite was the worst of all. It sets fast, which is what you want when you're manually angling the bowl to fill the cracks in. But without using a pressure pot and properly drying the wood, it bubbles and turns white instead of the copper I chose. The West Marine works okay but it has a really long set time, especially with a slow hardener. And since you're doing multiple pours, it's not efficient. Was I scared to put this bowl back on my lathe after it exploded in my face? Yes. Hence why I first tried to smooth out the inside with the duct tape still intact, but it was too off balanced and caused a lot of vibrations. So I had to have faith in my glue and smooth out the outside without any tape. Instead of peeling it off, Part of me was tempted to keep the tape on and turn it off instead. But duct tape is like Chuck Norris. Chances are it's stronger than carbide. Oh man, this looks familiar. Just kidding. This video has reached its bowl explosion quota. As I mentioned earlier, the Illumilite was terrible for this application. It got all puffy, uh, so I had a big blob on the edge of the bowl. It led to a really cool effect, though. It looks like I'm cutting air here because you cannot see the white blob as the bowl moves really fast. You can see there's still some high points where the resin is pretty thick. So it's a matter of just stopping and starting and just trying to take off as little as possible of the bowl where there's no more resin showing other than in the cracks. My go-to trinity of finishing products right now is cellulose sanding sealer cut with lacquer thinner, Yorkshire grit, and then the Bell's buffing system. But because it's oak, and I've tried the Bell's buffing system on it before without really great results. I decided to switch up the last one and use Brie Wax that I use friction to polish on. The last step here is to use my cold chuck to clean up and shape the bottom of the bowl. So I guess the moral of the story is when a bowl explodes in your face, duck. But seriously, 
I believe a good woodworker overcomes his or her mistakes. Perhaps a great woodworker doesn't make as many mistakes as me, but my personal mantra has been, it's not a mistake, just a design opportunity. I do not recommend this exploding bolt technique to anyone, but I'm happy with the results. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing.